This film is a dramatization of events in the life of Ellen Hart Pena. It's a learned behavior. It can be unlearned. You don't waste any time, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. What are you getting from this? What am my getting from this. What's the payoff? Uh, well, there wouldn't be any payoff. You so, like it. Now, yeah. see, I don't. Of course, it I don't makes like you it. feel it good. It make me feel good. You love it. I don't love it. This. It's your best friend. It's. Um. I bet I, it's all you can think about, isn't it? It's, it's better than sex. Nurse. You eat and you throw up, and that's all there is. Yeah. That's all there ever you know, don't is. Talk to me this Hiding way. food I don't and know eating you. it, and, you don't and speak then to finding me this way. a place to throw it up. And I want you to tell I, me why. I don't know why. Yes, you do. It's your drug. It's, I want you to my, tell me why. I don't know why. Two seconds longer than yesterday. Oh, it's an off day. You don't have time for off days. The trials are in two months. If you want to qualify, you got to run fast. My arms tucked in. Your arms look good. What about my shoulders? You need to be down and more relaxed. Okay. What else? Your stride's too long and you're uh, running heavy. Heavy? I could lose some weight over spring break. You'd run faster. Five pounds? Be honest. You could stand eight. Okay, fine, done. Wow, scholarship to law school. Well, I don't have it yet, I'm just applying. Isn't that kind of pushing it? Training for the 10K and all? Mm. Dad'll like it. Another lawyer in the house. Uh, that's not a very good reason to do it. What am I doing? Ugh, this is disgusting. How am I gonna run tomorrow? What do you mean? You burn it right off. You're a size four. I'm just huge. Are you Ugh. trying to cheer me up because I just got dumped? I just feel so bloated. Good night. <coughs> Ellen? Are you okay? Yeah. The Olympic boycott hasn't dimmed enthusiasm here at the 1980 trials. The stadium is packed here at Hayward Field as we come up on the first women's exhibition 10K. All right, listen up, okay? Now be conservative. Let's sell them our banks lead out. Stay in contact and make your move with three laps left to go. Ready? Ready. Okay. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, you either win this race or it's over, okay? Runners Go make to the team. line. No pressure, right? It's a beautiful day for the Olympic trials out here in Eugene, Oregon, but you have to wonder what they're thinking. Yes, Bob, you take a promising newcomer like Ellen Hart, you qualify for the trials, and then the Olympics are boycotted. You know, Al, I don't think any of us can really understand what these athletes have been through the past few months. It's a real shame when politics gets mixed up with sports. <laughs>
Kristen Banks, followed by Judy St. Hilaire and Ellen Hart taking third. An amazing race. This has to be the most bittersweet victory in the history of the Olympic trials. Here's the new 1980 American women's 10K exhibition team. For them, the road to Moscow and the Olympics ends here. You made the team, Ellen. Nobody can take that away from you. Hey, Ellen! Hey. Are you serious about this guy? Gabe, man. Good, because you got your work cut out for you if you're gonna make money off your running. That's where you lost it, right there. That's what cost you first place. You gotta work on your kick for your bell lap. Money for running, you think I can? Mm. Depends on what you want. I wanna be the best. <laughs> then you come train with me. Look, Ellen, I've been watching you since Albany. You got a load of raw talent. Bill was a fine coach for you, but you're not in college anymore. I can take you to the top. Yeah, well, I don't have a lot of time. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not some rich Harvard girl. There's eight kids in our family. Mm -hmm. I got student loans to pay off, so I got this teaching job. I got to start next month. Now, you forget about teaching. We'll get you on the circuit. You get a few wins, you'll pay off that loan in a year. How many times in one life do you think you're going to get a shot at the Olympics? His name's Dave Shattuck, and he's coached all the top runners. So you're going to train with him? Not gonna do anything until she pays off her student loans. Honey, give her a minute here. Well, she's already got a job teaching. Signed a two-year contract. She's lucky to have it. Dad, Maggie's got the hose. Come on out. Out. It's no. grown-up time. She is. Dad, Dave said that I could pay off the loan by doing endorsements and doing the circuit. That that's not a bad idea. I, well, I don't are we ever gonna cut that cake or are we just going to admire it? Maybe my math is off here. Let's figure this out. Dad, give her a break. We've got Joan Marie at law school, three of you at Harvard, me working three jobs so Ellie can just graduate with a degree in art history, a degree she doesn't have any intention of using. When I come back in the next life, I want to come back as one of my kids. Oh, this is sweet. <laughs> what, what is a four-letter word that means response to an insult starting with an S? Well, Dad, um... I came third at the trials. I think that's really good. Aren't you proud? Of course I'm proud of you. I expected it. But you've still got a job to get ready for. You gave you word. You get in there and do a good day's work, and that's what you're going to do. Slap. Response to an insult. Four letters. And forget about law school for a while, OK? Teach. Save your money. Pay things back. It's only two years, Ellie. Then you can think about the next Olympic trials. Contract. Aren't you proud of that? Of course I'm proud of you. I expect you word. You get in there and do a good day's work, and that's what you're going to do. That's a good run, guys. I'll see you tomorrow morning. OK, coach. I can run 10 miles, then do 20-minute interval laps in the pool. I, I know it's been two years, but I kept at it while I was teaching. I want to train. I want to be in the Olympic marathon trials. It's too late. It's too late. It's two years away. We got plenty of time. Not for the Olympic marathon, Ellen. Look, there's lots of other coaches. All right. Well, I got good times. I got really good times. You should try me. 
Come on, Dave. Wouldn't hurt you to try me. Besides, I've already moved here. Okay. Six o'clock tomorrow morning, Chautauqua Park. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Go on, get out of here. Every bone in my body, Terry. No, actually, there's no bones left in my body. I'm just one big gelatinous mass. This guy is too cute. What we have here is an airport for the 21st century. The landscape is beautiful. We have the space. I'm gonna roll into bed and I'm gonna sleep for 12 hours. Before, after your sister comes up from Denver. Thank you, Jennifer. Live report with Mayor Kenya and the new proposed Denver. Oh God, I forgot. Come in. Hey. Hey, Chris. Hi. I uh, hope this isn't a bad time. No, this is a bad time. Oh, Ellen, I just drove all this way. I need to talk to you. I uh, know. I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Chris. You must be Terry. Hi, fine. Ooh, popcorn. Help yourself. Thanks. Well, I'm just pretend I'm not here. I'm going to bed. See you guys. Good night, Terry. Good night. Good night. I'll be back. Me and all my friends. Well, I have your exams. Some of you have done very well. Tuesday, people, remember implications of unexpressed terms. Promises or obligations with particular attention to Zelenkin versus Lynch. Miss Hart. Excuse me. Your midterm. Normally, those on scholarship get better grades. I know you're running. I can bring it up, though. I can do both. So, what is the significance of Hadley versus Baxendale? Miss Hart! Um, Hadley purchased a milling wheel. You know, it's not going to happen unless the, uh, the person learned about the gift and then relied on getting it to their detriment. What? Uh, it's what you had trouble with in class. The third party don't eat beneficiary rules. I'm sorry. I'm John. Contracts I sit behind you in class. Oh, right. Hi, John. Excuse me. Oh, no, that's all right. There's no reason you should know my name. Oh, I can't believe the time. We've got property in five minutes. Uh, listen, we could uh, we, we could study together for the final. Oh, I'm way behind. I'd just slow you down. OK, uh, uh, 10 minute coffee break on Saturday. It's my best offer. She's got a 10 miler in Denver Saturday. Oh, boyfriend. Oh, no, she doesn't have time for coffee. How could she possibly have time for a boyfriend? Here's the route for the mayor's cup. Thanks, Coach. I was going to let him down slowly. It's 10 miles through the streets of Denver. The mayor runs this himself, so it can't be that tough. You're going to be paid your usual appearance fee. Your money well earned. Ellen, your rankings just came back. And? And you're ranked uh, top 10 in the US for all distances. 8K to marathon. Boy, Dave, you're just too easy to please. The first woman to cross the finish line in the mayor's 10-mile run is Ellen Hart. And here comes Mayor Pena himself, surrounded by his security, and they look a lot fresher than he does. Who is that? Selling Hart. Congratulations. You beat the mayor of Denver. <laughs> Great job, Mayor Pete. Hi, Great good to see you. Hi, thanks. Now, 
let's have a big hand for this year's men's winner of the 10 mile Mayor's Cup wow, race. Look at him. He can have to stand in line. And now for the women's winner, Ellen Hart. I haven't heard about you. Well, it was only 23 miles away. You live a serious life. It's my one great feeling. Mm -hmm. Another hand for Ellen Hart! Can you believe her? Mm -hmm. It wasn't that bad. Every time you start running some guy over with your charm, he's being ridiculous. Besides, you see those glasses he wears? He's gonna take those off. I'm gonna take some other things off, too. <laughs> Well, we hardly said two words to each other. I mean, if anybody's too busy to do anything, it's the mayor of Denver. Hello? It's the mayor of Denver. Hello? You're beautiful. Can I come in? Of course. <laughs> How silly of me. Yes. Um, Thank you. Please, please. Make yourself at home. Right. Um, there's a living room, and uh, I'll be right back. All right. Can I help you with? No, no. You, you stay right there, or uh, just take it easy. Um. How's, how about white wine? Does that sound all right? Sounds great. Great. It's beautiful. Thank you. I was third, and then my mom uh, had triplets. First in South Texas. Oh, you Catholics, you're so busy. <laughs> yeah, well, you're, uh, what, one of eight? Yeah, that's how I know. Um, hey, you remembered. Well, everything about you. Uh, to the trials. Yes, thank you. I know we don't have much time tonight, so I'll be right back. Okay. I, uh, I grew up in uh, Brownsville. Yeah? Right by the border. My dad was an international cotton broker. But uh, my mom made sure we could cook. It's incredible. Thank you. Oh, um, uh, please serve yourself. I'll see who that is. It's probably just Bart or Sam or... I forgot the tamales. Thank you. You forgot that's in my list. <laughs> I tried meatloaf, I tried eggs, I tried every recipe known to man that had broccoli in it. Why, you like broccoli? I hate it, but it seemed like the only vegetable I couldn't kill. <laughs> I love to cook. I got that from my mom. I mean, kids are her life work, but she was very smart. And your dad? Ah, oh, he's crusty, demanding. He's a law professor. But I adored him. Hmm. I probably wouldn't have been a runner if it weren't for him. He scared me to death as a kid. Actually, you remind me of him. I scare you? That's what the cooking does. <laughs> when they boycotted the 1980 games, I went through this time. I felt like I was dying. I didn't know what to do with myself. I just want a shot, that's all. Just one more shot. 249. 252. Come on, Ellen, you're two seconds back. Two. Ellen, get back here. You want to quit? What? You want to pack it in? What? Dave, I was seven minutes late. Big deal. I said I was sorry. You used to blow through these reps like they were nothing. You know, maybe I was wrong about you. Maybe you just don't want it. The trials are in five weeks. I qualified. Your boyfriend made the tabloids last night. He's a playboy, Ellen. He's using you. He's... Look, we got through Gabe. We got through John. We got through all the guys that are coming after you. This guy's just like them. You gotta get past him. You can't keep running your body into the ground and expect it to pack... You can't do that. It's not going to bounce back. Don't tell me that's not what you're doing, because I can see it. Look, 
you don't get your rest, you don't eat right, you're gonna die out there. It's 26.2 miles. You're gonna fail. That's it, it's as simple as that. Only three go on. Drop him. I wasn't going with him to begin with. Fine, I won't see him anymore. Good, hey, this way. Gotta focus on the trials. I know that. I just wanted to have a private. Wait, Ellen. I know you need to focus on the trials. Ellen. Wait, it's just that. I'm running. Could you just could you just stop for a second? I'm running. I noticed. Anyway, it dawned on me. Ellen, I can't keep. Just say it. Okay, fine. Am I coming on too strong? What? Am I chasing you too hard? Is that it? Am I scaring you by coming on so fast? You hadn't caught me yet. You owe me a phone call, Ellen Hart. If you've got a sore throat, you should go to bed. I can't. I've got three more hours of work left. How far did you run today? 15 miles. An interest in land must vest or fall within the life or lot. I've read this five times. I still don't know what it means. Anybody call while I was out? The usual. Chris, your mom, hey guys, the guy who called you okay. yesterday and the day before whose phone calls you're not returning. One phone call. Throw the guy a crumb. You can dash his hopes later. Leave a message, hi, that's hi, even better. Mom, yeah. call me. I don't know what to say to him. Why don't you try the direct approach? Federico, I think you're wasting your time. You should be dating a really nice girl, like my no, roommate. Uh, hi, I'm home now. Here's my private unlisted number, so you won't have to go through the answering service that handles my regular unlisted number. Got a pencil? It's 555-39. You're erasing his private enlisted number before you even hear it? Teary. You know, the Mocha chip was mine. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'll pick you up some tomorrow. Fine, I'm going to bed. Good night. I'm sorry. Mayor Pena's office. Uh, yes. This is Ellen Hart. And I... Miss Hart, I'll transfer you. Uh, no, I can just leave a message. Ellen. Oh, hi. God, you called. Yeah, well, you know, I'm so far behind, you wouldn't even believe. And besides, I, I told Coach Dave that I wouldn't date until after the trials. Hey, listen, let's go dancing. Just the two of us. Say yes. I'll tell you what, if you say yes, it'll be the last time you see me before the trials. The governor's here. The governor? She should have worn a long dress. Look absolutely ridiculous. Your elegant simplicity is perfect. Let me introduce you to some folks. Here is uh, the governor, Hello. Ellen Hart. Nice to meet you. Howdy. Hi, Daddy. How are you? Nice to see you again, ma'am.
never had an insecure moment in your life. <laughs> Not true. Actually, uh, Mr. Benjamin's dance class. I was 12, sweaty, calm, and short. I didn't want to be anywhere else but there. And you told him? Yes, I did. <laughs> and he said, Federico, one day you're going to be standing in front of the most beautiful woman in the world. And when that happens, you're going to be very grateful that you took the time to learn to dance. And are you? Yes, I am. In front of the most beautiful woman in the world. And yes, I'm very grateful. You're trembling. My fight or flight mechanism. Those are the only two options. He's a playboy, Ellen. He's using well, you. Well, then, you'll have to do whatever it takes to run as fast Normally as you can. Normally, those on scholarship get better grades. I can do both. You're going to die out there. It's 26.2 miles. You're going to fail. Therefore, I respectfully submit that the court erred in dismissing this case <clears throat> because the treatment... Uh, Mr. Wortham, begging the court's pardon, but Miss Hart is completely overlooking the impact of Tuttle versus Buck. Miss Hart, how would you respond? Are you familiar with the case? Yes, we uh, are louder, Miss Hart? Yes, sir. Um, just give me a minute. It's in here, and I'll just look it up. Mr. Wortham. Thank you. couldn't ask for better weather than what we've got here in Olympia, Washington, or more enthusiastic crowds as we get ready for the first women's Olympic marathon trial. Well, that's right, Les, and it's been a long time coming. Now, the race itself is a grueling 26.2 miles. I see Ellen Hart. She has trained very hard the past few years, working with nationally known coach Dave Shattuck. She came in first in the 1982 Pepsi Challenge National Championship, third in the 1982 Nike Marathon. That's right, and don't forget the American record she set for the 30K. Thank you. I only dated him once. Yeah. Twice. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm as surprised as you are. Mm. Runners, two minutes to the start. Look, I don't even know what to say. Go out easy, stay in contact, run smart. Right, run a smart race. All right, put those in water. You know, Les, this is the most grueling event in the trial. Just to qualify, they have to run over 26 miles in just two hours, 51 minutes, and 16 seconds. Right, Jill, and for the first time, a chance to compete this race in the Olympics.
something is terribly wrong with Ellen Hart. She's running down, Les, right before the end. There's Ellen Hart finishing a disappointing 11th, what should have been the race of her life. Three world record holders, you got more talent than any of them. Would you please help me understand this? Just help me understand this. Sorry, Dave. What happened out there? I'll come back, Dave. I promise you, I'm gonna come back. It's gonna be better. You can't. <laughs> it's over. Thought I'd only date you if you were in the Olympics? <laughs> Ellen, we're gonna celebrate your victory. 26.2 miles, 11th place to Ellen Hart, who ran with grace. No. It's over, and I can't bring it back. I used to get my brothers and sisters to run around the block with flags and <laughs> pretend he was the Olympics. And I blew it. I blew it. I didn't eat right. I didn't sleep. I didn't do the things I know to no, do. I can't let you do this to I yourself. Did. Do you realize how few people ever do what you did? <clears throat> you followed through. I don't know if I'm brave or not. I don't think my bravery has ever been tested. But you, I saw yours with all four eyes. I'm so glad you're on this earth. I love you. I see out there many friends. Friendships that were forged in the fire of hard work and ethical conduct. And once again, this will be a people's campaign. of that campaign will be the commitment that we made when we started together the last term. Imagine a great city. That city is ours, and the time is now. I'll turn these people up over here. You take Cherry Hills. Oh, Phil, hand these out. And I'll take Market Street. And just go over the list of what their responsibilities are. Here we go. Excuse me, Ellen. I need a break. Uh, Ed, handle that. Hi. Take the after. I'll call you. You can't just leave in the middle of the day. I can do whatever I want. I'm the mayor. <laughs> Come on. Look at this. Look. Look. Look at that. This is why we live here. This is crazy. We're living our lives cooped up in a car between five minute sound bites. Let's get married. What? Uh, I mean it. Let's get married. What? Where's the 
romance and the flowers and the bended knee thing. And yeah, well, you know, we're on a mountain hill. I mean, yeah. Okay. Okay. Will you marry me? I'll give you a room full of flowers and my undying love. God, please say yes, my knees in gravel. Mm. Federico, you don't know me. Know you? Oh, I know how, how your hair sticks up in the morning. I know how you, you love to send thank you notes to the newspaper delivery boy. Tell me something I don't know. Ellen, is there something wrong? What is it? Is, is there somebody else? Oh. No, I love only you. I love you too. Mayor's office. We're down nine points. How'd that happen? Yeah, he's right here. It's Ellen. Mayor's office. Hi, honey. It's Al at the city desk. Just a second. Uh, I'll call him back in ten minutes. I can take take it out there, please. Yeah. No, no, no. It's just Chad. He's gone. I just can't get caught up. There's there's this endless wave of things that, that I haven't done and things that don't do right. And every time I turn around, there's more and more. Okay, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to give you an assignment, okay? I want you to sit down, and I want you to write a list. And then we'll go over it together, and we'll prioritize. Annie, are you okay? Absolutely. I'm fine. That, you're right. Uh, this is all doable. Uh, I'm just scared about my arguments for my appellate brief. That's all. Darling, you have a fine mind. You just need to take a break. You'll get back to it. It'll be okay. Mayor, the post is on deadline. Thank you. I'll be right there. Listen. Look, um, I can handle this. Don't, don't you worry at all. Everything's going to be fine. <sighs> you sure? I, absolutely. I love you. No, don't you worry, okay? Go ahead. Okay. I wake up every day and I say, today's the day I'm going to eat like a normal person. <laughs> I don't even know what that means anymore. Sometimes I just think if I could die, that'd be the best thing, you know? It's already cost me everything. Um, the Olympics. Doing well in law school. My stomach aches all the time. My throat is raw. My digestive system's all messed up. My, my teeth hurt. I, I get the shakes. And I lie to everybody. I lie to my sister to Federico and my roommate. But I want to stop. I want to stop more than anything.
I, I have this problem with um with food. Mm hmm I eat things that I shouldn't, and and then I throw it up. There's lots or a candy bar. What are we talking it's about? It's only when I'm tense. Uh huh. And I, I can't control it right now. Well, sweetheart, you have willpower. And well, we can work on this together. I want you to know that if you're ever tense, talk to me. Call me. And we can handle this. We can handle anything. Okay? Okay. Whoa. <laughs> All right. When we get married, I think that we should do it after the election so that it's not a campaign issue. Are you saying yes? You'll marry me? Yes. Oh, God. Actually, this is my favorite part. The day after we've won. It is your dream for this great city. Your dream for what Denver is and can be that has brought us another four years. I can tell you now. Okay. Folks, Ellen and I are going to be married. I made your favorite oatmeal cookies with chocolate chips and some mushroom soup, a little sandwich, and some fresh fruit. I knew you'd be starving. Thanks. Oh, it's so nice to have you home. So what's on the list? Oh, well, there's nothing on your list except to show up and to have fun. I've taken care of everything. Mom, I came here early to finalize all the details. I, I knew that you'd be exhausted and our tastes have always matched, but if there's anything that you don't like... We were talking all the time on the phone. Well, I wanted to surprise you. Okay, t fine. So what am I gonna do? Well, I've, uh, I ordered the mini fajitas and the poached salmon, those little taquitas that you wanted, the lemon cake and champagne. Oh, and the priest that married Dad and I, his health's improved. He's going to perform the ceremony. Well, you don't look very happy. I'm happy, okay? Honestly, if there is anything. Oh, Mom, I'm fine. What else? What else? I found our cake ornament. Look, I mean, you, you don't have to use it just because Dad... Okay. I mean, if you, if you change your mind... It's fine, it looks okay. one at the mall. Our dress came. Mom. Well, it's dragging the floor. Oh. You should have it in something. Mom. I don't know. Think it'll make me look fat? Well, it, it, it's a size four, Ellie. And they had to take it in. Oh, yeah? You're stepping on that. Oh, I'm sorry. Here I am. Oh! That is kind of pretty, isn't it? Oh, you look so beautiful. Uh, it is good. Right. Right. It's a lucky thing to do that. I know. Oh, super sticky. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. The reception is this way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, no. You okay? I'm just overwhelmed. Ellen? Wait a minute. Talk to me. I just don't want to mess anything up. There's nothing in the world that you could do that would ever make me stop loving you. So just remember that. So I'm doing it a lot less now. Um, I told Federico that 
um, I stopped, but I'm going to kind of taper it off, and I think I've got it under control. And we've talked about having kids. Ellen, get real. You can't have kids. You scarf and barf, or starve yourself. And you haven't really been honest with this guy. You haven't told him exactly. Yes, what I you... have, Gail. I told him. You told him nothing but lies to make him feel better. Well, he loves me, Gail. He loves some fantasy, not the real you. What are you going to do when he finds out who you really are? Think he's going to love you then? There we go. So, the good news is, Bixby Harrison Cantor has just hired me. Honey, congratulations. That's great. Yeah. Good going. What's the bad news? Mm -hmm. They're moving their corporate headquarters to Milwaukee? No, my window's going to be right across from your window. Except my window's going to be much smaller. Mm -hmm. Are you happy? Sweetheart, I'm ecstatic. Do you realize, finally, somebody in our family's got a real job? You don't suppose they hired me just because I'm married to you, do you? To be so young and gorgeous and racked by such terrible self-doubt, of course not. I failed to graduate in the top half of my class, you might recall. You might recall that you were training for the trials and helping me campaign. They loved you when you interned for them last summer. Face it, Ellen, you're just very good at what you do. in the bag. Just reach in there. Thank you, God. <gasps> Congratulations. You're a lawyer now. I knew you'd pass. So now that you're a real lawyer, what do you say we celebrate by having a love child so that you could be forced by your Catholic guilt to quit and stay home, huh? What do you say? Well, before we have that love child, mm -hmm. I think I need to go to my deposition in L.A. I mean, Stan will kill me if I don't show up. Oh, come on. What, you really want to have a baby? Only if you do. Well, of course I do, but I don't know if I'll be a very good mother. I, mean, I can barely take care of myself. Besides, I don't know if I can have kids. You're going to be a wonderful mother. And of course you can have kids. Look at you. You take great care of yourself. Mom. My body's a mess. It really is. Well, we'll just have to work on it. You're gonna be late for your nine o'clock meeting with the commissioner. I know. You're gonna be late too. Well, don't worry about me. You just go. Okay. Well, come on. We'll go together. Oh no, I have still got some things to do around here. Okay. 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 Don't forget the rec center opening tonight at seven. I'll just meet you there. You know what? You know my schedule better than I do. <laughs> don't you have to study for your brief? <sighs> Ernie Becker on L.A. Law knows more than I do. That hour's not gonna kill me at all. Are you sure, honey? Positive. Have Skip pick me up at six thirty.
Hi, honey. Thanks. Do you realize it's been two years since we've gone any place without those guys? Well, I think they were already packed. <laughs> so I think we're entitled every two years. I can't believe we've been married that long. Yeah, it seems longer. <laughs> Hey. Hey. Now, wait a minute. We've only been trying for a year. The doctor says... I know what the doctor said. Just thought it would have happened by now. And every month it doesn't happen. You know what? Having a baby, Ellen, is not something you put on a to-do list. Okay? It'll happen when it happens. The body's not working. Ellen! Well, that's what you're thinking, isn't it? That it's all my fault? You want me to go get tested again? Is that it? Is that what you want? Well, this is really putting us in the mood to have some quality time together. Honey, you are so intense about this. I just want to have a baby. Is that so bad? You women and these silly diets. Well, you have seriously low levels of potassium and iron. Your BUNs and your triglycerides are a mess. And we've got to bring those up right away. So, follow the diet my nurse gives you and uh, take these prenatals. Prenatals? Well, that's what ladies usually do when they're going to have a baby. A baby? Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what are those? Uh, bite marks? Uh, uh, some jewelry pinched me. Oh. Doctor, if I don't eat right, you know, sometimes you can't, um, but I will. Of course you will. Of course. But if I, if I throw up, because sometimes you... Relax. Everybody worries. Um, I'm pregnant and I throw up. You're bulimic. How far along are you? Eight weeks. Have you told your doctor? Husband? He's very busy, and he's under a lot of stress right now, so I don't want him to know. I'll be frank with you. Setting the baby aside for the moment. You keep this up, you'll have kidney failure, a burst esophagus, ruptured intestines. I, I hear that, and I can't stop. All I want to do is just have this baby, get through the pregnancy, and then after that... We could put you in the hospital. Well, yeah, I'd have to spend the rest of my life there. <clears throat> I don't eat junk food anymore. I threw that all away. And I've cut way down on throwing up. I only throw up like once a week because it's just such a relief. And now I use carrots as markers. Markers? What does that mean? Well, when I, when I look at myself and, and um, I'm just getting so fat. So what I do is, is, is I eat a really good meal for the baby, and then I add carrots. And so if I keep eating, when it's time to throw up, I only throw up till I get to the carrots, and then I know that there's still something good in there for the baby. I went through the garbage bags, and he almost caught me. I need help. Oh, I hate this. Nothing fits. I'm so fat. I don't know if I'm going to get through this pregnancy. I just keep getting bigger and bigger. Come on, honey. We got to go. Mm. Ow. Sweetie? Mm. Call Dr. Adamo. Come here. 
No, call Dr. Adamo. At home, his number's on the table. I'm canceling New Year's. No, you're not going to cancel New Year's. I've got to. Yes, Dr. Adamo, please. Well, this is Mayor Pena. That's right. My wife's a patient. How does it feel, hon? It's cramping. Yes. Um, hi, doctor. Uh, this is uh, yeah, Ellen's cramping again. No, I don't know. Hold on. Here, let me talk to her. Hello, doctor. I'm sorry to call you. Uh, no, they're worse. No, just now. Okay, I will. All right, thank you again. There we go. It's a verdict. Either the cramps will get worse or they'll stop. I'm staying. No, you're not staying, you're going. I'm not going anywhere. You have a responsibility. That's right, to my wife. There we go. There are 500 people who have worked their hearts out for your campaign and they've gotten all dressed up tonight to spend one minute in your company. You're going. I'm staying. That little boy who saved the toddler in the lake, he's going to get his medal from Chet. A and the cleaning woman who, who gave $40,000 to the city and all she asked for was a dance with you. You have no choice. You have to go. Even I understand that. Hi. Are you sure about go. this? Go. Come here. Someday, I want to give you a choice. I love you. Um, Bart knows where to right. reach me. I know, call Bart, he'll take care of it. Yeah, yeah. Hi, this is Cindy from OA. I'm calling to tell you, Gail just died. Thank you. Thank you for calling. When I heard that Gail had died from a ruptured esophagus, that's when it became real to me. That little speck of life inside of me, counting on me. And in that instant, I chose life. I chose my baby's life. And that's when it all stopped. Ellen, our work's just started. Oh, I, I told you, I'm done with it. You can say that now, but how can you be sure? You haven't dealt with any of the reasons why you did it. <laughs> You're not listening to me. I'm finished with it. I'll never do it again. Ellen, deal with it here, or deal with it later. I already told you. I'm done with it.
he has risen. He is not here. Behold where they had laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. And there shall ye see him as he said unto you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When we read the words of Mark, chapters 16, verses 1 through 7, we are committing to wonder. Wonder at the heart of the I got her. Come on. Thank you. She's collapsed. Calm down, man. The tongue depressor now in my hand. You need to get the IV. Watch the line. OBGYN stat emergency unit. I paged him twice. My God, look at the enamel on the inside of her teeth. It's all taken off. She's bulimic? Why didn't you tell me? She's 190 over 120. Go, go, go. And climbing. I'm losing the baby. Why didn't you tell me? I'm sorry. You told me you were over this. Did I get it wrong? Should I have listened to you in a better way? You were fine, Federico. Fine. I was fine. Had I any idea you were doing this to yourself, I would have said quit your job. It wasn't my job. You lied to me. You stopped calling me, and I want to know why. You wanted me to call you? Every half an hour? Because that's how often it was. To get you out of your staff meetings and your, your council sessions and your, your work groups and your press conferences every half an hour? What are you saying? Well, that was it. Trying to find a place to throw up. There. Is that what you wanted to hear? Do you want me to be clear? Food was my whole life, and not just a little bit of it. I could eat 10,000 calories at a time. That's impossible. I would eat, I would throw up, and it was agony. Look at this. Look, Federico! They're teeth marks. I would ram my whole fist down my throat. See, I wasn't lucky that way. Throwing up wasn't easy for me. Sometimes it would take five, ten, twenty times before all of it would come up. It took hours. And then it was time to do it again. I marked it down. I put little X's every time I'd binge and purge. On the bad days, there would be five X's in a row. I even threw up on her honeymoon. <sighs> this is not cancer, Federico. It's something that I've done to myself. I took all my, my dreams and I just threw them away. I tried. When I got pregnant, I, I really tried. You, you have to know I did. And, and, and I never threw up the vitamins. I just thought, if I told you, you'd leave me. Ellen, how could I leave? <laughs> Ellen, I love you. You don't have to fight this thing alone anymore, okay? I'm here. Oh, God. Oh. What if I can't stop? Ellen, I'd like you to meet Dr. Wallace. Hello. Hello. Ellen, I think it might be a good idea if you and Dr. Wallace had a little private chat. It's a uh, learned behavior. It can be unlearned. Well, 
You don't waste any time, do you? No, I don't. What are you getting from this? Uh, uh, what am I getting from this? What's what's the payoff? What's... Well, there there is no payoff. You wouldn't be doing this unless you were getting something. N um, no, that's not true. You are getting something back. Look, uh, I've already been through all this kind of thing. Uh, I've been through OA, TM. I have a team nutritionist. I uh, have traveled 50 miles to my therapist. So I've, I, I know what... You like this. No, I don't like this. <laughs> it makes you feel good. It does not make me feel you good. You love it. Um, I'm it, trying it, to tell you that this way of, of uh, treating me is not quite... Makes you feel better than Federico ever did. You know, this isn't going to It's your work. best friend. This is not the right kind of... Um, Tell me how it makes you feel, how much you love it. This is not helping at all. It's all you can think about. It's, it's better than sex, isn't it? Uh, nurse? Nurse? Uh, hello? It feels so good going down. No. And then when you bring it back up, that's even better. You eat and you throw up, and that's all there is. Yeah. That's all there ever you know, don't is. Talk to me this Hiding way. food I don't and know eating you, it, and, you don't and then speak to finding me this way. a place to throw it up. And I want you to tell I, me why. I don't know why. I yes, know you why. do know why. I don't know why. Yes, do you, think you do. If I knew why, do you think I'd be? Yes. No, I don't know why. It's your drug. It's not. It's your drug. Tell me why. Tell me why. Because I don't feel when I eat. All the bad things go away. I don't feel when I eat. Is that what you want me to say? Is that what you want me to say? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Ella. Oh. <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. Mayor Pena. Mayor Pena, is it true you're not running for a third term? Is it true your wife made you step down, Mrs. Pena? Mayor Pena, how the baby's is the pregnancy? baby's fine. My wife is fine. I just need to get her home. That's all. I'm no, Trish, I'm not running for a third term. Is it true this took your closest advisors by surprise, Mayor Pena? Thank you. Mayor Pena. My wife and I. Mayor Pena, can we get a comment on why you're not running? Thank you very much. No comment from the mayor yeah. at this time about Hospital. the upcoming Mayor Pena election. and his wife are just leaving. Apparently, the baby is fine. But the big news is, Mayor Pena will not be seeking a third term. More at 10. How can he leave me here and trust I'll do the right thing? What choice do I have? Plenty. You have plenty of choices. You could have Bart stand over me with a gun. You could take me to work with you. Or just stick me in a hospital. Why did you marry me? Was I just convenient? Some convenient cover? Did you have any feelings for me at all? Yeah, that's what it was, a convenient cover. You lied to me. Yes, I lied to you. We've been through that. Not just about your feelings, but about who you were. How you really felt. Well, it was pretty easy because you were never there. I was here. I was here every night I was here. Do you want to stop this? Is that it? Do you want to leave? What? No, I don't want to leave. Do you want me to go? No, I don't want you to go. You're always going. You're always someplace else. You have to be somewhere else. Like, you had to go to the New Year's Eve party for 500 people that you didn't even know. How could you do that? You told me to go. I can't read your mind. If you needed me, you should have said so. Well, I needed you then. And I need you now. Better we go. Don't. Don't, don't go. Please don't go. I can't cancel the governor. But if you really need me, I'll be home right afterwards.
These are the twins, fear and desire. This one is fear, and this one is desire. Now, a lot of the ancient cultures believed that in order to get back to the garden, you had to learn to walk the path between them. What are you afraid of? Being a woman, being an adult, confronting people, saying no. See, I was always good at following a script, because that way I could stay in control. But what if you just let all of that go? Oh, I would have no idea who I was. I, I wouldn't know what to do. But right now, I'm holding on, and that way I can keep everything in balance. And if you don't? Then, then it'll all blow up. You have that much power? Well, then there's no safe place. Yes, there is. But you have to create it. How? By taking your power back. One small, fearful act at a time. I am scared to death what I have done to this baby. Do you understand? Do you get it? I am frightened I have done something horrible. And you just ignore it, you just humor me, you just put a Band-Aid on it. And I'm so tired of being alone, and I'm furious at you. But you didn't eat. Are you listening to me? I am, honey. God, I am. But do you realize you didn't eat? You were angry at me, and, and you have every right to be, but you didn't eat. You came here instead. Oh. Oh, my God, Ellen. Ellen. Oh. What's wrong? Oh, God, what have I done? What's happening? Oh, God, what have I done? Oh, oh God, what have I done? Uh, Janice! Oh, no, Janice, please. stay right here. Oh, help me. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, please, God. Here's your daughter. Here's your there she is. She... Yes, absolutely. She's perfect. I should be more worried about you. Look at her. I'm so glad you're here. She's perfect. can't do anything right. She cries all the time. Babies do that. Well, Mom holds her and she stops. Ellen, if it makes you feel any better, this is pretty standard stuff. It's easier not to feel anything at all. OK. Tell me something depressing. OK. People that have bulimia, women, when they get pregnant and they stop, do they start again? A lot of them, yes. Ellen, I'm not going to kid you. It's going to take a lot of hard, constant work to change these habits in order to cope. You yeah, see, when, when I feel pain, I focus on something else. I change the channels. I tell a joke. You know, that's I've always gotten stroked for doing that. I, I can't be weak. Why? Well, Mama needs me to be strong. You know, there was a lot of us, and I was the only one that the gender mattered because she wanted a girl for my older sister Joni to play with. And were you? Was I what? Were you best friends with Joni? Uh, actually, actually, my mom. And Chris. And your mother's name is Joan? Yes. 
So you were really the best friend your mother never had. For a second there, I wanted to eat. That's interesting. So what are you going to do instead? Remember when I was a kid, I had asthma? Oh, honey. Now, what, what's wrong? Oh, oh nothing. I just want to say this. No. Um, and you and Dad rigged that bell into your room? <laughs> now, I'm, I'm listening. I'm just going to go give the baby her bottle. And you told me, if I ever have an attack, just ring the bell. That was over 25 years ago. Well, one night I had an attack, Mom. It scared me to death. I think I was five, and I remember lying there wanting to ring the bell. She's already asleep. I wanted so much to ring it, but I couldn't, because you had a new baby, and you were always really tired, but I didn't ring it. I never rang it. I was so proud of that, because well, I wasn't a bother. Sweetheart, I would have come. There was never a point of rebellion. I never did a single solitary thing to cause a moment's worry. Evan, what is this? But see, I didn't want that. That's not what I wanted. All I wanted to do was please you, knowing that, that I could never measure up. What are you saying? <laughs> you okay, Ellie? No, Dad, I'm not okay. Was it crowded at the mall? See. You're always teaching me to say the safe and the cheery thing, never stepping on anybody's toes. Hi, sweet. I'm going to take the baby upstairs, if that's all right. What is this? What's happening? I'm trying to tell you who I am. I know who you are. You know what I let you see. Peace at any price? No, Mom, not anymore. The price is too great. Would somebody please tell me what's going on? Ellie? Remember my coach at Harvard? Yes. Well, spring break, he wanted me to drop a few pounds, and I wanted to please him, so I starved myself. And then one day, I think I was working on Easter presents. Oh, uh, uh, the boxes? Is that the year that you made those little wooden boxes? What difference does it make? Well, I'm just trying to figure out well, I don't know when it was. What Mom, year? Know. That's all that I'm trying to do. I don't know when it was. Just let me tell you this. I was so hungry, so I began to eat everything. And then it was somebody's birthday. It must have been Dad's because it was spring break. And we had this <clears throat> huge meal, and, and I ate that. And then I remember it was chocolate. We had chocolate cake, and I ate that too. And... Um, then I was disgusted at myself, and so I got up from the table. I don't want to hear this. I went down the hall, and I, I got on my hands and knees, hear this. and I made myself throw up. Oh, Ellie. And I thought, wow, this is great. You know, this is a great diet, but it was horrible. So I decided that I never would do that again, and then I never stopped. And Mom... You knew. No. Yes, you did. Two small bathrooms down You're the wrong. hall. All these kids. I ate pie dough. I ate bags of junk food. You had to have known. You're wrong. Mom, you were there. I thought it would go away. Oh, my God. Well, we had three kids in college. There were four more right behind you. You were working so hard. I couldn't tell you. I thought. I thought it would go away. That was 10 years, Dad, of starving and eating and throwing up. I almost lost the baby because of that. I almost died myself. I just, I just wanted you to be happy. And I wanted to give you that, don't you understand? Like a present. But Mom, we can't be happy all the time. I took all the bad things and all the, the feelings I wasn't supposed to feel, and I buried them, and I buried them so deep that I couldn't find them. What should I have done differently? I mean, obviously. If anybody is to blame, it's me. Mom, Dad, it's nobody's to blame. I pushed you, Ellie. I was always pushing you. I liked that you pushed me. It made me feel special. I mean, growing up, 
I didn't think you could tell any of us kids apart. Ellie. But I ran. I ran, and I knew in your eyes I was special. My God, Ellie, you were always special to me. All of you. Sweetheart, I'm so sorry. I was always harder on you than the others. You seemed stronger. Tell me what I can do. Tell me where we go from here. My mom believed me, and I'll always be. It's going to be a struggle every day, and I need your help. I just want you here on this earth. I, I just can't pretend anymore. Sometimes I'm sad, sometimes I'm mad and angry. I'm just not perfect. Watch this, I'm gonna catch the bubbles. Woo! Okay, catch them. Catch them, catch it. Hey! Uh-oh, who called? It was Warren Christopher. President Clinton wants me to be his secretary of transportation. This is your choice, Ellen. This is your chance to choose. What are you saying? If I don't want to go, we won't go? That's right. It'd be long hours again, and you wouldn't have Wallace there for therapy. You'd be in a place where you didn't know anybody. Well, I'd have you, little toodle doodle here. Let's go, Federico. Not just for you, but for me. And for her. I can't keep running away from life and scared of trying new things. Let's go, as long as we keep talking. We're going to Washington. <laughs> Box is all packed. Movers are coming when, Friday? Yeah. What? Just scared. Stay in the moment. That's all any of us has. Just didn't know that it would hurt this much. What, leaving? Living. Then you're doing something right, kiddo. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. I give up. Oh. 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 I'm gonna miss this place. How you doing? Huh. Me at the present moment? Yeah. I'm doing well. Yeah. <laughs>